Hello, friends of tracking. Welcome to this first video tutorial in a series of video tutorials that Lotte Brandse and I will be doing on valuing actions in football. If you haven't seen Lotte's introductory presentation or you haven't read our Actions Speak Louder Than Goals paper, then I would highly recommend you to do so before watching this video tutorial. Uh, in this first video tutorial, I'll guide you through the entire process or the entire pipeline of uh, obtaining the data, valuing game states, valuing on the ball actions, and finally rating players. In the follow-up tutorials, uh, Lotte and I will dive a bit deeper into each of the individual steps in this uh, process. Uh, for our video tutorials, uh, we will be using the publicly available Wisecout match event data set that was released recently. Uh, this data set includes match event data for the 2017-2018 uh, season in the top five European competitions, as well as the 2018 FIFA World Cup and the UEFA Euro 2016 uh, Championship. Uh, we will also be using the publicly available uh, Soccer Action uh, Python library that provides an open source implementation of the VAPE framework that Lotte uh, and I developed together with Tom DeCross and Jesse Davis. Uh, for our video tutorials, uh, we will be using Jupyter Notebooks, which you can either run on your local machine or on Google Colab. Uh, we might be making some changes to these notebooks after recording the videos, so the notebooks that you find on GitHub might be slightly different from the ones that you see in the videos. All right, let's get started. Uh, this is the Jupyter Notebook that we'll be using in this video tutorial. Uh, I'm running this uh, Jupyter Notebook locally on my own laptop with a custom theme for Jupyter Notebook. So the notebook might look a bit different on your own machine or on Google Colab. So you see the outline or the table of contents to the left and the actual notebook uh, to the right. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you need to carry out four steps. Uh, the first step is to download the Wisecout data set and to pre-process the relevant data. Uh, the second step is to value game states uh, by training true predictive machine learning models. Uh, to do so, we'll need to compute a uh, set of descriptive features for each game state. I will need to compute uh, well two labels uh, for each game state as well. Uh, one that tells us whether a goal was scored within the next 10 actions, and one that tells us whether a goal was conceded within the next 10 actions. Uh, the third step is to uh, then value all the on-the-ball actions by using these two trained uh, machine learning models. And the fourth and final step is to rate the players by aggregating the values of their on-the-ball actions. Uh, I will now hide the table of contents to the left. Um, and in this, uh, in this uh, notebook, I'll adopt the convention that uh, variables that refer to a data frame object are prefixed with uh, df underscore. And that's variables that refer to a collection of data frame objects, such as lists, sets, or dicts, uh, dicts uh, containing data frame objects are prefixed with uh, dfs underscore. Uh, I've also included the reference to the actions speak louder than goals uh, paper that uh, introduces the VAVE framework and then uh, reference to the uh, article that describes the Wisecout match event data set in a bit more uh, detail. So before we uh, continue with the first step in the process, we need to import a couple of uh, Python modules that we'll be using in this uh, notebook. So we'll be using both a number of uh, standard Python modules as well as a couple of uh, third party uh, libraries. So I'll import all of those uh, by executing these cells one by one. So besides the uh, standard Python uh, modules, we'll also be using uh, Pandas, uh, Scikit-Learn, and XGBoost. So we'll be using version 1.0.3 of Pandas, uh, version 0.22.2 of Scikit-Learn, and version 1.0.2 of XGBoost, uh, alongside the uh, Soccer Action uh, library that I've mentioned uh, before. So now we should be uh, all set uh, well, to, uh, to start with the first step in the process, which is to download and pre-process the, the Wisecout uh, data. Uh, this step consists of uh, three sub-steps that we need to take. So the, the first sub-step is to actually download the data files from the uh, Fishshare data uh, website where the Wisecout data set was made publicly available. Uh, the second sub-step is to construct an AGF5 file named wisecout.h5 that contains all the relevant information uh, from the data set that is necessary to, uh, to run the VAPE framework. 
And the third sub step is to convert this yscout.h5 file into a spedl.h5 file that contains the same information in the uh, spedl representation. So uh, spedl is our attempt at designing a uniform representation of the actions that take place in a, a football match and which is also compatible with the match event data that is supplied by all the major uh, well, suppliers of uh, match event data such as Scout, uh, Statsbond and Opta. Uh, note that the uh, Soccer Action Library offers off-the-shelf functionality to convert um, Scout uh, data into the SPEDAL representation. Uh, however, this functionality is unfortunately not yet uh, compatible with the format of the publicly available data set. So we'll need to do some additional work there ourselves. Let's continue with actually downloading the data files that we need from the Fixture uh, website. Uh, the Wisecout data set is quite extensive and consists of multiple uh, data files, but the Vape framework only requires four of them, uh, which are the events file, the matches file, uh, the players file, and the teams file. So the matches file includes all the match events that are included in the data set for each of the matches. Uh, the matches file provides an overview of the matches that are included in the data set and the players and teams files uh, provide additional information about the players and the teams in the data set. So I've defined a, a dict in, in Python where the keys are the names of these files and the values are the URLs of the, uh, of the files. Um, so I'll execute this cell. And as I uh, wrote in the comments here, uh, the first two files, the events files and the matches files are zip files that contain one JSON file for each of the uh, seven covered competitions. And the uh, players and team files are simply uh, JSON files that we can work with uh, directly. So in order to download these files in the, in the dictionary, <coughs> I'll uh, execute this uh, for loop that simply loops through the, through, through the data files, uh, gets uh, the URL of each file, downloads the file, stores it to the local uh, file system, and uh, which also checks whether the uh, file is a zip file or not. And if uh, the file is a zip file, then it will actually extract all the uh, contained uh, JSON files to the uh, local file system as well, such that we can easily work with these files in the, in the next step. So uh, downloading the data files might take uh, a bit of time depending on the uh, speed of your internet connection. So all these files combined are about uh, 75 megabytes in, in size. So after executing the previous cell, we end up with a bunch of JSON files on our local uh, file system. So we have the players and the team's uh, JSON files, as well as a uh, match events and matches uh, JSON file for each of the seven competitions that are included in the Wisecout data set. So now that we have all these files in our local uh, file system, we can start pre-processing them. And essentially, what we need to do is read each of these uh, JSON files, uh, transform them into a Pandas data frame, and store all these uh, data frames into a uh, yscout.h5 file. So although the Pandas library offers uh, out-of-the-box out of support uh, for reading uh, JSON files and converting them into Pandas data frames, um, well, we need to define a auxiliary function that actually handles the uh, well, special way in which um, the special characters in the Wisecout dataset have been encoded. So I'll just um, I'll execute this cell uh, to define the auxiliary function that I, that I wrote, and then we can continue with actually reading the, uh, the data. So we'll start with uh, reading the team's uh, JSON file. So we use the auxiliary function I just defined. Um, we provide the teams.json file as a parameter and then feed the uh, resulting um, JSON string into the uh, readJSON function of the uh, uh, Pandas library. So I'll execute this cell and then um, we'll end up with the data frame that looks like this, uh, which provides some additional information about each of the uh, teams that occur in the data set. Um, similarly, or before we continue, we also need to store this uh, data frame into the wisecout.h5 um, file. 
So we'll use the uh, key uh, teams uh, to store this uh, data frame. Uh, then we move on to the to the players, and there we do some. Well, we essentially do the exact same thing. So we again use the auxiliary read JSON file to convert this uh, player to JSON file into a uh, JSON string. Uh, we feed the resulting JSON string into the uh, read JSON function from the pandas uh, library. And then we end up again with a uh, data frame that this time looks as follows. So for each player, we get some uh, well, personal information about the player, such as his uh, first name, last name, date of birth, height, weight, um, and so on. And like we did with the team's uh, data frame, we also need to store this uh, data frame in the um, yscout.h5 uh, file. And uh, this time we need, uh, or we use the key uh, players to do so. So once we have the teams and the players, we can continue to the matches and here things become slightly more tricky. Uh, so as I mentioned before, the data uh, set uh, covers seven different competitions. So five domestic competitions, as well as the uh, 2016 European Championship and the 2018 FIFA World Cup. So um, I actually defined a uh, list called competitions that allows us to select the competition that we want to include in our data set. Uh, so in this uh, tutorial, I'll only use the data for the European Championship uh, to speed up things. So if you would like to use uh, multiple competitions or different competitions, uh, feel free to uh, well, uncomment the ones that you would like to include in your data set. Uh, however, bear in mind that the more competitions you select, uh, the longer it will take to run the entire notebook. So since the European Championship has the fewest matches, I'll just go uh, with that one in this uh, video tutorial. So as I mentioned, um, well, we ended up with a, a, a separate uh, matches.json file for each of the selected competitions. Uh, the file is called uh, matches underscore uh, competition name uh, dot JSON. Uh, so for the, for the competitions that we, uh, that we defined uh, in this competitions list above, we'll just read the um, well, corresponding matches.json file using this auxiliary function that I defined before. Uh, we'll again use the read JSON function from the pandas library to uh, transform it into a, a data frame and then we'll append it uh, to a list that I defined over here. So this uh, list will uh, contain um, one data frame for each of the competitions that we've uh, selected above. And then finally, I'll use the uh, pandas concat function to uh, concatenate all these uh, separate uh, data frames in one big uh, data frame. So, um, well, let's, let's execute the cell as well. Uh, and then we end up with a uh, data frame that looks like this. So uh, this data frame includes all the matches that we've, uh, that we've uh, well, in the, in the competitions that we've selected. So in this case, uh, just the matches at the 2016 European uh, Championship. So for each match, we get to see some, uh, some relevant information that helps us uh, identify the, the match. And like we did with the teams and the players, we also need to store this uh, data frame <coughs> in the yscout.h5 file. So we'll use the uh, matches key for that. So there we go. And now um, finally, we've arrived at the most exciting parts of the, of the data set, which are the, the match events. Uh, which define all the, the actions that the players have uh, performed uh, during a match. And uh, well, as we did with the matches, uh, we'll also loop uh, through the, well, the competitions that we selected, um, read the corresponding events.json uh, file uh, using the auxiliary, auxiliary function that I defined earlier. Um, then we'll use the readjson function again from the pandas uh, library to transform uh, the JSON file into a data frame. And there is like one more thing we, uh, we're going to do here is, uh, which is uh, to actually group the events uh, by match ID, such that we end up with a separate um, data frame for each individual match. So uh, further down the pipeline, it will be important for us to know uh, in which match a particular event uh, occurred. So that's why we use the group by function in um, Pandas to actually group these events per match. Uh, once we've done so, uh, we'll loop through each of the uh, of the groups. So, actually, 
uh, through each of the matches. Uh, we'll get the uh, well the uh, events uh, for each of the matches and store them under the key events slash match underscore match ID in this uh, wisecout.h5 file. So I'll uh, execute this cell as well. It uh, it might take a while depending on how many uh, competitions and how many matches you've uh, selected. In this case, it's uh, it's pretty fast. So. Um, well, after executing the cell, we, uh, we've actually created a wisecout.h5 file that contains uh, a bunch of keys. So one key for the, for the player's data frame, one key for the team's data frame, one key for the match's uh, data frame, and then finally uh, one key for, for the events of each match that's included, that is included in our, in our data set. And then to to, uh, fi uh, to finalize the uh, the pre-processing uh, part of this uh, uh, tutorial, we can call the convert to spell function that is in the uh, soccer library, uh, soccer action library. I'm sorry uh, to convert this wisecout.h5 file into the uh, spell.h5 file that we'll need uh, uh, going forward. So um, transforming uh, the the wisecout.h5 file into the spell.h5 uh, uh, .h5 file uh, might be one of the uh, slowest uh, parts in the tutorial actually. So we'll have to wait a bit for this to, uh, to finish. Um, so there's a couple of uh, actions or operations going on here and the final action is uh, to actually convert the events into this uh, spedal action representation. So depending on the number of competitions uh, that you select, uh, well, this will uh, this operation will take some uh, amount of uh, time. So a couple of more games to go, and yeah, we're done. So we have the spelled H5 file that we need in the next steps of the uh, uh, process. Now that we've successfully converted the Wisecout data into the spell representation, we can continue to the second step in the process, which is to value uh, game states. And uh, this step in the process, again, consists of several sub steps that we need to, need to take. So the first sub step is to generate features that help describe uh, the game states, uh, as well as to distinguish between the different game states. Uh, the second sub step is to generate uh, labels that capture the value of the game state. Uh, in this tutorial, we'll compute two labels for each game state. Uh, one label that tells us whether a goal was scored within the next 10 actions, and one label that tells us whether a goal was conceded within the next 10 actions. Uh, the third sub step is, com is to compose a data set by selecting a representative set of features and the, uh, the two labels that we've computed. Uh, the fourth sub step is to train predictive machine learning models that actually try to predict either of both uh, labels using the features that we've defined. And the uh, fifth and uh, final sub step is to value uh, the game states using these two uh, trained uh, predictive machine learning uh, models. So before we continue, um, we need to read a couple of uh, data frames from the spedal.h5 uh, uh, file. And we also need to uh, set our definition of a, of a game state. So in this case, um, we'll define a game state as a sequence of three consecutive actions, uh, which is also the default within the, the VAPE uh, framework. Uh, so the first step, step is to generate uh, game state features. And for this, we'll use the feature generators that are included in the features module of the soccer action uh, library. Uh, each of these functions expects uh, either a, a single action or a, a game state, which is a sequence of uh, multiple actions, and in this case, uh, three consecutive actions. So in the, in the following cell, I've uh, defined a list that contains a bunch of uh, feature generators, and these uh, features include or uh, describe uh, relevant information about the, the game states, uh, such as the, the type of action, uh, the body part that the uh, player used to perform the action, uh, the result of the action, whether the, the, the action was successful or not, uh, the score at the time of the uh, action, uh, the location of the action, and uh, so on. I've just selected a few of them over here. There's a few more available in the, in the features 
uh, module and you can obviously also define your own features which is something we'll be looking into in a uh, follow-up uh, video tutorial um, so once we've defined all these uh, feature generators you can actually also start computing these features for the uh, for the game states and that's what we'll be doing in the in the next cell so there's actually uh, three things going on over here so for each um, already uh, start uh, running the cell so for each uh, game in our data set, we'll uh, first obtain the actions that belong to that particular um, um, game. We'll actually merge the actions with the, uh, well, some of the data frames that we've uh, read from the spatterload H5 file. And then we'll use the uh, features uh, module again to transform these actions into, into game stage, which is what's going on over here. And then we'll also normalize these game states uh, to make sure that uh, each uh, well team supposedly plays from the left uh, to the right side on the on the pitch. And after this normalization step, we can actually uh, use this list comprehension to call each of these uh, function uh, feature generators in uh, uh, one by one on the on on the game state that that we've just um, generated. And uh, finally we can uh, store the, uh, the the computed features for each uh, game state in each uh, match in a uh, feature.h5 uh, file uh, using uh, well the uh, game id as the key in this uh, file so that we uh, still know uh, to which uh, game in our data sets the computed features belong so once we have all these uh, features we can also uh, do something similar for the for the labels. Uh, so here, uh, I again use the uh, well, I use the, the label generators from the from the labels uh, module in the soccer action library, and uh, each of these functions uh, again expects either uh, well uh, individual actions or, or or game states, and uh, returns the corresponding label for the individual action or for the uh, game state. So in this case. I'm interested in uh, two uh, labels in the labels uh, module. Uh, one um, uh, label generator that tells us whether a goal was scored within the next 10 actions and one that tells us whether a goal was conceded uh, within the next uh, 10 actions. And we actually obtain these labels in a very similar fashion. So we again loop through, uh, first need to execute the cell. Uh, so we again loop through all the games in our data set. We retrieve the uh, well the actions that correspond to the to the match, and then we uh, again use a, a list comprehension over here to uh, well compute all our uh, labels for the uh, for the actions that correspond to this uh, to this match, and we store the uh, the labels uh, in a um, HDF5 uh, file called labels.h5 under the uh, key. Uh, under a key that uh, that refers to the to the game ID. So after uh, I'll, I'll run the cell as well. So after running the cell, we have the, the the features that describe the game states as well as the corresponding labels. After generating the features and the labels uh, for all the matches in our data set, we can now construct a data set uh, that we can feed into a machine learning uh, algorithm. Uh, in order to do so, we need to uh, combine the features that we uh, generated for the individual matches into one large uh, features uh, data frame, which is what we're um, what is going on in uh, this cell over here. So uh, we loop uh, through all the games in our data set. We retrieve the features that we uh, generated for that particular uh, game. Uh, store these uh, features into or this features data frame into a list and finally we call the pd.concat uh, function to concatenate all these individual data frames into one large uh, data frame containing the features for all the game states in all the uh, matches and this uh, data frame looks as uh, follows so we have a bunch of columns and uh, a bunch of rows that um, uh, describe all the uh, all the uh, game states in the in the data set and um, obviously we also need the corresponding labels in order to uh, to be able to train our predictive uh, machine learning models uh, as I mentioned before we're interested in two labels one that tells us whether a goal was scored within the ne next 10 actions and one that tells us whether a goal was conceded within the next 10 actions 
And for the labels, we do the exact same thing as for the uh, features. So we look through the games we're interested in. We retrieve the labels uh, for that uh, particular game. Um, we'll store the, the, the data frame con uh, containing these labels into a, a list again. And finally, we call the pd.concat function to concatenate all these uh, data frames into a uh, well, one large uh, uh, data frame. And uh, this uh, data frame looks as uh, follows. So for each uh, game state in our data set, well, we have two uh, columns, uh, one that tells us whether a goal was scored and one that tells us whether a goal was conceded from that particular uh, game state. And unsurprisingly, uh, most of these values are, uh, or most of these labels are false. Uh, now that our data set is in a good shape, it's fairly um, straightforward to train the predictive machine learning models that we need. So that's essentially what's going on in the cell over here. I'll already execute the cell because training the models can, it can take a bit of time. Uh, so we simply loop through the two labels we're interested in, scores and concedes. Uh, for each label, we uh, construct an XGB classifier object and we call the fit method on this uh, object, uh, feeding in the uh, features that we produce for each of the game states and the corresponding labels uh, that we're interested in. And once the model has been fitted, uh, we store the model into the uh, models dictionary over there, such that we can easily reuse the models uh, later on. So we're using a, a simple XGB classifier um, over here with default hyperparameters. In a future video tutorial, we'll, uh, we'll investigate this a bit further and we'll explore how to uh, optimize the hyperparameters of your um, machine learning uh, algorithm. Once we've, we've trained our two machine learning models, we can actually use them to make uh, predictions about the labels of the, of the game states, which, which is what is essentially going on in this uh, cell over here. Um, so we look through the labels again, scores and concedes. Uh, we uh, retrieve the relevant model from the models um, dictionary and call the uh, predict problem method on the, on the object, feeding in the, the features again. Um, the predict problem um, method will output a number between zero and one, uh, telling us how likely it is that the label is uh, true and how likely it is that the label is false. Since we're interested in the true labels over here, I'm also selecting the, uh, the second column uh, with index uh, one over here. Uh, and we again store the uh, predictions uh, for both labels in a data frame uh, called uh, DF uh, predictions. And this uh, data frame looks as follows. So for each game state, each row in this data frame, we, um, well, we get a prediction uh, for the uh, scores label being true and the conceits label uh, being true. Uh, <clears throat> So to simplify the analysis, uh, analysis further down the line, uh, we will also concatenate uh, the game IDs uh, back to these predictions. That's essentially what's going on over here. Um, it's nothing too, too interesting. Um, and here we do the actual concatenation and then the um, predictions um, data frame looks as follows. So we have, uh, well, one row for each game uh, state uh, still with the scores and concedes column, but now we've also concatenated the game ID to each of the um, uh, game states. And then finally, we can group these uh, uh, predictions uh, per game using this uh, game ID column that we've just added. And then we can store predictions for each uh, uh, game separately. So we um, loop through this uh, DF predictions per game uh, group by uh, object. We retrieve the predictions for each individual game and store them into a, a HFI file called predictions.h5 uh, under the key that refers to the, to the game. So, and there we are. After making our predictions for the individual game states, we can use these predictions to also value the actions that uh, trigger the transitions uh, from one game state uh, to another. 
so before we do so, I'm going to read uh, some uh, player and team information that we'll need further down our analysis. And I'll already execute uh, uh, this cell uh, over here where we uh, loop through the games again. We retrieve the actions that happened in that particular match, uh, as well as our predictions uh, for, the, uh, for that particular match. And then uh, using these predictions and the actions, uh, we call the value function in the uh, soccer action library to compute the values of the uh, actions uh, that the players performed in uh, the match. Um, so we do the, we repeat this procedure for all the games in our data set. And finally, we uh, combine all these um, uh, values into one large uh, data frame called uh, DF values over here. And this uh, data frame looks as uh, follows. So for each action, uh, well, we see the name of the player, um, our initial predictions, uh, the offensive uh, fate value, the defensive fate value, and the overall uh, fate value for each individual uh, action. So now that we have these uh, values for individual actions, we can also uh, rate uh, players. Uh, to do so, we'll uh, group the actions per player using the df values uh, data frame object that, we, that we've just created. Uh, so that's essentially what's going on in this cell over here. Uh, so we select a couple of relevant columns from the df values uh, data frame, such as a uh, player ID, uh, the team name, uh, the player name, and the fate value. And we group uh, the entries in this data frame by a uh, player ID, uh, team name, and uh, player name. And we compute uh, two aggregates uh, for each uh, player. So we count the number of fate values for each player. And we also compute the sum of the fate values for each individual player. And then finally, we sort uh, the resulting ranking uh, based on the uh, total uh, fate value for each player. And then we get a ranking as follows. So as you can see over here, uh, Garrett Bale uh, tops our, our ranking. Uh, with a FAPE uh, value of 3.72. Uh, uh, however, um, oftentimes uh, different players have uh, played different number of minutes, especially in uh, tournaments, such as the Euro uh, 2016. And um, uh, therefore we also normalize the FAPE value per 90 minutes of uh, play. So we first uh, compute the number of minutes that every uh, player has played um, throughout the tournament. That's what's going on over here. So we, uh, we read the DF uh, player games uh, um, data frame from the Spellbot H5 uh, file. And then we, uh, well, we group together the, uh, the entries in this file uh, by player ID and uh, compute the sum, which gives, uh, gives us the total number of minutes each uh, player has uh, played. We can quickly inspect this uh, data frame as well to give you a better understanding of what's going on. So for each uh, player ID, we get the corresponding uh, number of minutes uh, played. And then finally, we can use these minutes played to compute a FAPE rating per 90 minutes for each player. Uh, so we first merge the ranking that we computed before with these minutes played. Uh, then we uh, drop all the players who played fewer than 360 minutes. Uh, obviously, you can uh, toy around with this uh, threshold yourself. So uh, right now I'm using a threshold of 360 minutes or four full games. Uh, but you can uh, well, pick whatever value you want. And then we uh, compute the total uh, tape sum by 90 minutes and divide by the number of minutes played uh, by the player. And finally, we, uh, well, we rank or we sort the ranking according to this FAPE rating per 90 minutes. So let's do that. And then we get uh, the following uh, ranking of FAPE rating per 90 minutes for the UEFA Euro 2016. And finally, we can also store this uh, ranking to a CSV file if you uh, want. In one of the future uh, video tutorials, we'll, uh, we'll analyze these results in a bit uh, more detail. Uh, that's everything I've got for the, for the first uh, tutorial. Um, in the coming days, we'll release a few more video tutorials where we'll discuss 
the feature generation, uh, the model learning, and the uh, model analysis uh, parts of the pipeline in a bit more uh, detail. So have fun touring around with the notebook. If you have any questions, any remarks, any suggestions, uh, please feel free to get in touch. Uh, Thank you.